For years, we've been lied to. We've been told time is the most valuable resource in the world. In fact, since I believed it for so long, I myself made a video claiming this. And don't get me wrong, I stand by that statement. Time is the most valuable resource. Except for one thing, it doesn't exist. Regardless of how real it may seem, time is only a construct of our minds. This is because it's made up of two things, the past and the future, both of which are projections of our minds. And though the mind is accurate a lot of the time, its projections aren't reality, they're mere representations of it. Outside of our minds, only the present exists, therefore making presence the most valuable resource. But presence isn't the most valuable thing in the world just by default, because even if the past and future did exist in the objective reality, presence would still hold more value, since that's where all joy, love, inspiration, and connection can be found. In fact, the present is the source of everything. Just think about it. When has something ever been created not in the present? Yes, it may have emerged throughout a string of present moments, which we may perceive as the passage of time, but this, again, is just a trick for mind, because in reality, it was never actually not the present. And since the present is a source of everything, it only makes sense that it acts as the bridge between the material and worldly and the divine. Therefore, only in presence can we connect with all that is, which includes our true selves and the essence of life itself. This is what makes it so precious, but despite how precious it is, or more likely because of how precious it is, we're being robbed of it constantly, by everyone and everything. We're constantly bombarded with distractions, notifications, and things that aren't actually important. We're distracted by our thoughts. We're caught in the trap of pursuing things that don't actually matter to us or fulfill us. We're consumed by appearances and by the ego. We've trapped ourselves in the matrix, playing a game that we made up, following rules that don't exist, and all the while missing out on the only thing that does. Presence. We're so caught up planning for or fearing the future and either reminiscing about or regretting the past that we push the present moment, the only thing of value, to the side. Not even just to the side, but to the back, to the bottom of the pile. Our priorities have been reversed, and what should be at the top of our list is now at the bottom, while what used to be at the bottom is now at the top. In our current state of affairs, our identity, status, money, power, control, and influence now trump connection, community, play, joy, humility, creativity, all of which can be accessed through presence. Don't believe me? Just think about it. In order to truly connect with someone, you have to be present enough to really hear the concerns and empathize or at least sympathize with their problems. In order to connect with yourself, with nature, with the divine, you have to be in the present moment. You have to go within and open your heart so that that connection can be made. And an open heart indicates full presence. When you play, you're brought into presence. You're not thinking about what's happened, what could happen, or what will happen. Instead, you're fully absorbed in what you're doing. Likewise, when you feel joy, you're connected to the present moment. It's impossible to feel joy for something that has yet to occur. That's called excitement. And it's impossible to feel it for something that's already happened. That's called attachment, nostalgia, or maybe gratitude. You can only feel joy for the present moment, because joy, again, comes from an open heart, not from the projections of the mind into either the past or the future. And lastly, to create, you must be present, because to create is to align yourself with the flow of life, since ultimately it's not you who's creating, it's the power of creation flowing through you, through your hands, your voice, your body, whatever your chosen form of expression may be. So no, time isn't the most valuable thing in the world. Presence is. The sad thing is that we've distanced ourselves so much from it that the thing that should come most naturally to us, that should feel most like home for us, now only causes us suffering. This is why we avoid boredom at all costs. And the thing is, this likely isn't a coincidence. Isn't it interesting that all of human history so far has led to the development of the attention economy? This isn't by chance, it's a logical consequence of being led by our egos, because ego is the opposite of presence, and our presence is intimately tied to our attention. 
This means that if we're con constantly looking outside of ourselves, if we're constantly focused on the external, then we won't ever get a chance to develop and work on our presence, which is when our attention is placed on ourself, our internal reality. And unfortunately, as long as this is true, we'll remain disconnected to our true power, and we won't ever realize our fullest potential, which is achieved when we connect with the divine and when we allow ourselves to be guided by something larger than us. So it's up to us to break the cycle and reclaim our power by reclaiming our presence, because if we don't, then we'll die never truly having lived. If you like this video, then you might also like the video link in the end card. It speaks at greater lengths on the war that exists between ego and presence. Before you leave though, comment down below letting me know what your relationship to presence is. Do you think it's as important as I do? I want this to be a space where we can all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you have to say. As for right now though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.